What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. We are doing a brunette spring freshen up transformation on um, my friend, client, coworker, Michaela. Uh, you definitely have seen her in a few videos before if you watched some of my other tutorials. And we did like the solid Hailey Bieber inspired brunette for the winter, but she is so over the like all over color. Um, she's sick of the two-toned vibe of it and um you know actually having you think that having one solid color is lower maintenance but depending on the situation it actually be a lot higher maintenance and that's what she kind of realized so yeah we're just gonna kind of freshen her up we still want to keep a brunette base um but we're actually kind of going for like a beigey blonde highlights and just adding in a lot of dimension so um she really wants like a nice bold face frame but she does not want it like super kapow in your face right up top she really wants it to be really strong on like the sides and the temples so as you guys actually just saw me sectioning her out um i kind of i am doing a mix of like what i call like my halo balayage i know i've done a video on that before so i'm doing that technique and that placement here and then um, I'm also just going to go through and like just do a standard TZ light throughout the interior of her head. But when you go about sectioning for the halo balayage, depending on what they want, um, I'm actually, my money piece placement is focused more so on the sides. So more of the temples. And um, again, knowing that she does not really want to see a whole ton of blonde when she pulls her hair back. And again, she does not want it super stark and super bright up on the top most part of her hairline so i actually didn't even include that in my money piece sectioning you'll see me later on when i go and work on the interior you'll see me how and how i go to attack that now she does have like growing out curtain bangs so i did have to like lighten a little bit of that area um but again for this money piece part focus it more so on the sides and the underneath so that that halo part can really shine and be really nice and bright again through that side area and that when she pulls her hair forward and especially when she curls her hair and she curls it all away from her face that side money piece part is going to really shine it's like a peekaboo and a halo money piece combined now what you guys see me doing right now is i'm just going along the curvature of the head for her money piece uh, I start right at the top at the top of the ear on one side. And I just work my way up and then I do the same on the other side. And as you guys see me doing right here, I'm not really taking these sections up very high. Now, um, for those like shorter pieces, those more hairline pieces right at the ear area and right at the front hairline, since they're always a little bit shorter naturally anyway. And again, I'm kind of working through the curtain bang area right here too, as you see. These do have to go kind of high because you don't, on the shorter pieces, if you don't bring the blonde up very high, it definitely would just look like breakage. But on the longer pieces, don't bring them up very high up to the scalp because again, we don't really want that super high up highlighted appearance at least not in this situation we want it to be very much so that we are still a brunette naturally but we just have again like a very expensive brunette looking balayage so you'll see me as i'm working my way back over here you'll see me taking these guys up a little higher and again i'll just make sure to root shadow them to kind of make sure that root and the root to highlight ratio is where we need it to be um, but then again, when we start getting the length back, that's where we're going to start teasing more and not bringing them up very high either. What I kind of used as my guide was just kind of where I saw her line of demarcation, honestly, when I could. Um, and then it was kind of nice that we did have some pieces that did need to go up a little bit higher because then I felt like that kind of was able to like blend that in a little bit more too. But um, anyway, so yes, she does have a line of demarcation. Like I said, we did her hair uh back in the fall and we lightened everything and made her all like a level five okay so technically this is still overlapping it's not on level nine hair don't get me wrong but she is like a level eight underneath this five color and that's why it was she was always having to tone it at home because it was lightening up super quickly so that's why when you go dark from being previously lightened, it's not always the world's lowest maintenance situation. And that's what I make sure to tell my clients all the time. Now, we were hoping since I like filled it 
and we did multiple layers of level five that day that we did it we were hoping that it wouldn't fade as fast for her but it still did and that's fine hair is annoying you know sci it's the whole science part of it we knew we knew that it was a high chance that it was going to be like that you know but you just kind of hope for the best but it is what it is again she kept it for the winter and you know is just ready for something new now so um because of that though you need to be careful when you're lightening the hair just because it's a level five right now to your eyes doesn't always mean that it is like the texture of it is a level five just because it visibly is colored as such doesn't mean that you can treat it as such so i treated the ends of her hair like a level eight because i knew that the underneath of her hair was a level eight and her hair is a little bit on the finer side too and her strands are on the finer side and her hair, when I'm, when you're lifting smart and you, and you have a smart lightener formula, her hair actually lifts very, very well. She was always under the impression for years and years and years that her hair did not lift well. But ever since I've been doing it, I haven't had an issue. But again, I treat brunettes and blondes differently when I lighten them. Also, too, side note, you guys, I'm so sorry in advance for all the times you're going to see me moving my hands in this video. I try to edit it out as much as I can, but... I am such a hand mover. I'm literally moving my hands now as I am doing this voiceover. Um, and when I am talking to my coworkers or my friends, you know, I'm really close with them. So I'm, we, we talk a lot. We talk from the time that this video started to the time this hair was, was done. So I'm really sorry in advance for all the times you see me moving my hands. Anyway, um, so long story short i'm actually only using 10 volume here along the hairline i guess is what i'm saying because i knew i knew that we were gonna have to let these highlights sit for a while i wanted to let them sit for a long time and i did not want to blow open her cuticle and tick her hair off either but my trade-off for it was i'm actually using um, aligo's extra blonde lightener so it's their white lightener and it's their strongest one and it lifts up to nine levels and I tell all of my coworkers too, and anytime I'm talking about extra blonde, I always say, I'm like, extra blonde is not forgiving if you formulate it incorrectly. So if I were to have gone in with this with 20 volume, it probably would have like really stressed out and irritated her hair and possibly could have damaged it. But since I use 10 volume, knowing that it's a strong lightener and knowing that it really has that strong lifting power, I was able to kind of like compromise and use both where again, I wanted that strong lifting power, but I wanted it to be a lot more controlled. So that's where I opted for, again, extra blonde that I knew would, would get there when I needed it to be. But again, I made it the whole slow and steady situation by implementing a ton volume in with it. So you guys just see me kind of working through the back. Again, just very, uh, very Rudy Teasy lights. And when I finished that, I let everything down. And um, I just kind of did my standard balayage placement then for this. And I did like a tea parting where I uh, divided the front from the back. And then from there, I divided her part and she parts along the middle. So I just divided that up. And then I just went back in the front then and just kind of kept working on the interior. So the interior, you guys are going to see again, no surprise, but knowing that we want to keep it very rooty, I kept her teasy lights very rooty too, as you see. And I go down very, very low. Um, and then I uh, pretty much am just doing the same thing. I really was doing, I was doing a lot of soft weaving up front and I'm doing again a lot of soft weaving here as well. We wanted it dimensional, but I wanted it to be really soft and dimensional for her. So I didn't really want to take like, um, I didn't really want to take like super like ribbony strands. I most of the pictures that she was showing me, they were all very soft dimensional pieces and uh, soft dimensional like highlights as well. So when I see the soft dimension, that's where I'm more so I'm going to be opting for a baby light inspired weave. And then if I'm seeing a lot of like uh, a mix of dimension with that contrast, that's where I'll probably start to put in more of the ribbony highlights in where I'm doing a little bit more of a wider stitched weave. But again, for this situation, I more so opted for the baby light inspired weave. And here you guys see, I am grabbing the rest of her curtain bang right there. And I'm actually really, really teasing that out. I'm kind of treating it like a tip out where I'm teasing quite a bit of it. Sorry, the camera cut off right there. You'll see me when I go back, when I do it again on the other side. But I'm just going to go back in and re-explain it. But again, I'm actually, there's more tees than there are highlights in that, in that tipped out section. Um, and again, that will be what kind of helps to give it that like shadowed appearance 
where again, her money piece isn't going to be super stark and in your face, especially when it's straight. It's going to be more so when it's curled and when her, when her curtain bangs are like flipped out, it's going to be where you're really going to see that like flared out. And it's more so again, the money piece is focused more so on the sides. I feel like a lot of us think that money pieces have to be focused right up top and on the sides. And yes, in a lot of cases that is true, but in those more like peekaboo money pieces, which is what I love on brunettes, especially when brunettes want to stay brunettes, it can be more so focused on the sides and you can have your strong Rudy appearance up on the top. Okay, I think I talked about that enough. If you have any other questions about that, just let me know down in the comments or DM me on Instagram or something. But other than that, I'm gonna keep kind of working through. And like I said, when I work my way on this side, the camera doesn't cut out at this point on the money piece over here. So you'll kind of see me painting it a little bit more. But yeah, I'm just gonna kind of keep going through and um, keep doing all of these TZ lights. When I work through the back, I'm doing the same thing too. So I'm gonna pop back in once when all of the highlights are done. All right, so I am almost done applying all of the highlights in now. And um, what I decided to do as well was we are going in and we're going to be adding in some low lights. Um, when I was consulting with her, she was just kind of, she kept saying that she was just, she's sick of, the one thing that she just gets sick of with her hair is she feels like as it starts growing out, it gets very two-toned and that's where she gets really sick of it. And that's a, definitely a very common thing that a lot of my clients have, especially those that love, love, love a lot of dimension. Um... And again, I knew obviously since we did it all over solid color on her last time, you know, she, if I just went in and did the highlights, yes, what is like all over, um, like what, what her leave out is definitely will add us a little bit more dimension, but that's why I decided to go in and I added in some more low lights as well, because then technically we've got three tones that we're working with. We're, we're working with the low light shade, her leave out shade that we, that we liked. We talked about possibly like toning that down or something, but we decided to keep it. And then we've got our highlights as well. Um, so what I just did was she's naturally a level five. So I literally just went in with Clara gloss 5N, 5NB. My, it's a standard nice low light formula. Um, and I am just kind of going through and I'm going back in the hair, wherever I feel like her hair could use a little bit more extra dimension on top of the highlight to natural leave out that she has. And we decided that we're just going to do the low lights just through the mids and we're leaving the ends out so that it doesn't have, a, we, we don't want low, the low lights to make her have the darker appearance of hair. I, the, the one thing that I tell my clients when they're, when we're doing low lights is 
If you focus it on the roots and the mids, it definitely encourages dimension. However, depending on the thickness of the hair and how many low lights we're doing, if you bring the low lights all the way through the ends, that could be where you're focusing on. It might make the, your, the overall appearance be darker. And we didn't want to be darker today. We just really wanted to add in a lot of dimension. So that's why we decided to just bring the low lights in through the mid area. And kind of how I base it is I pretty much just went through. I didn't do every other highlight. I did not do any low lights on the money piece area either. Um, I just kind of went every couple highlight leave out spots. I just kind of went through and checked it. And um, I just kind of visualized like, do I feel like we need to add in a little bit of dimension here? And then I would kind of just like pick out those uh, that leave out area. And I would just kind of bring my low light in from there. Sometimes depending on the on the client and depending on what we're doing, sometimes I do have to be a little bit more strategic in how many low lights we're leaving and have more of a ratio. But for this, where we're just going to add in even more dimension than what we'll have. In this situation, it's better to just apply all of the highlights and then see where added dimension needs. It's kind of like, again, just like an added bonus is kind of how I treated it. So um, again, I just kind of applied those in all over and then um, let everything sit. She processed for about 35-ish minutes, I believe, 35, 45 minutes. And then here is her after. It is so freaking stunning, you guys. Again, just so much more dimensional. And then for her roots, we used, I just did a slight uh, shadow root and I just used 5NB Chlorogloss and then her ends were Chlorogloss as well that had 9GV, 8GI, 9GI, 8NB, and 8AI, again, from Chlorogloss. So here's the final look. I hope you guys enjoy. Let me know what you guys think and I will see you guys in my next video. If you have any other questions or anything, feel free to DM me on Instagram. All right, bye guys.